Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we're going to begin the funeral services of Mrs. Barbara Faye Barish. Appreciate if everyone would take a moment to be sure your cell phones have been turned off. We welcome those of you who are online. Rabbi Eitan Allen will be officiating. Good morning, everybody. On behalf of the family and Barbara's loved ones, I want to thank you all for being with us, both in person and over the computer, online. I want to thank those at Chicago Jewish for arranging everything so respectfully and expediently. It's always difficult to say goodbye to a parent, a loved one, a grandmother, a friend. And Barbara is no exception a special woman, a woman of grace, a woman of kindness, and a woman who cared deeply for her fellow human being. Before we have a chance to hear a few words from her loved ones, we'll begin with a few selections from Psalms. King David says in the 23rd Psalm, both in Hebrew and in English, Mizmor le David, Adonai Lori, Loech Sar, Binos desha yarbitseni, alme minuchos jinahaleni, Nafshi yishove yancheni bimagli tzedek laman shemo, Gam ki eleich begates al mavas, lo ira ra ki ato imadi, Shiftecha umishantecha, Hema yinachamuni, Taroch lefanai shochan neged sorirai, Tishanta bashemen roshi kosi rivayo, Achto vachesed yer defuni kol yemechayai, a song of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. God causes me to lie down in lust pastures. God leads me beside tranquil waters. God restores my soul and guides me in righteous paths for God's name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your scepter and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before full view of my adversaries. You have anointed my head with oil, my cup overflows. May only goodness and kindness pursue me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for a length of days. It is tradition in many Jewish circles to recite the words of King Solomon, the wise king. Shlomo HaMelech, King Solomon says, in Proverbs and Mishle, he enumerates the virtues of the Jewish woman. And he says again, both in Hebrew and in English, Eshet chayil mi yimsa v'rachok mipninim michra batach balev bala v'shalal lo yechsar g'malasu tov v'lo ra kol yimei chayeha darshat semer ufishtim v'taas b'chefetz kapaha Haisaka neo socher, me merchach tabi lachma. Vatakam baod laila, vititin ter of levesa, vichok lena rosaha. Zamama asada vitikacheu, me pri hape nata karim. Chagra be oz mas neha, vataamit roseha. Tama kitov sakra, lo yichbe balaila nera. Yadeha shelka bakishor, vichape tamku for alech. Kapa parcel ani. Biadeha shilchali avion, lo sira lebeisa mishaleg ki kolbeisa lavush shanim. Marvadim asas Allah sheish viargaman lavusha. Noda b'sharim ba'ala b'shivto im zikne aritz. Sadin asas avatimkor v'chagar nas nalik nani. Oz v'hadar lavusha v'atischak liyom acharon. Pi apaska b'chachma v'toras chesed alishona. Tophia halichos besa velechem aslus lo sochel. Kamu vanev ayeshua ba'ala vihala. Rabos banos asu chayel viat alis al kulana. Sheker achen vehever ha yofi. Isha yira sadonai hi tisalal. Tenula mi priya da vihaluha bishari masa. A gallant woman who can find. Far beyond pearls is her worth. Her husband's heartfelt trust is in her and he shall lack for nothing. 
She bestows good upon him and never harm all the days of her life. She seeks out wool and linen, and her hands work willingly. She is like a merchant fleet, bringing her sustenance from afar. She arises while it is yet night, and gives provisions to her household and directions to her maidens. She envisions a field and acquires it. From the fruits of her handiwork, she plants a vineyard. With vigor, she girds her loins and strengthens her arms. She discerns that her enterprise is good. Her lamp does not go out by night. Her hand she stretches out to the poor, and her palms support the spindle. She spreads her palms to the needy and extends her hands to the destitute. She fears not snow for her household, for her entire household is clothed with scarlet wool. Her mouth is open with wisdom, the teachings of her kindness is her tongue. Her children arise and praise her. Her husband and he lauds her. Solomon ends, many daughters have accomplished much, but you surpass them all. Grace is false and beauty is vain. A woman in awe of God, she should be praised. Give her the fruits of her own hand and let her deeds praise her in the gathering places. For those of us who were lucky enough to know Barbara, to care for her and to be cared by her, she was a remarkable woman, a complex life, many ups and downs, and much thought and grace and beauty were inside her. Surely amongst the most special and amazing achievements of her life are her two beautiful children, Jay and Renee, her wonderful granddaughter, Nicole, people that cared for her so deeply, and she was certainly the light of their lives, and they were the light of hers. There is a statement I shared with Jay and Renee when we were speaking, and I think it's very true in this case, that people often quip, and they say, if I'd known that grandchildren were this wonderful, I would have had them first. And certainly, Barbara felt that, Nicole, you were one of the biggest lights of her entire life on so many levels. And when they, you were in the room, I heard many people say that there was nobody else. You just shined forth with all that you have to offer and all the joy and pride that you gave her. And we'd like to hear a few words from here now. <laughs> Take your time. Hi, I'm Nicole. Um, my grandmother was a lot of things to many people. She was a great mother, a great wife, a great friend. But to me, she was just my grandmother, and that was my everything. She was someone I could call, whether it be 10 in the morning, 2 in the morning. She would always answer, always be there through the good times and the bad times. Um, even when I was little, she lived right next door to me in the apartment building. And I remember one time, I was six years old. This is one of her favorite stories. I called her, I woke up, and I was scared. For some reason, I was convinced that there was a murderer in the apartment, and he was gonna kill me and kill my dad, and I needed Grandma to come and save me. So I called her at 5.45 in the morning and said, Grandma, I need you to come over here right now. She's like, what's wrong? I go, there's someone here, they're gonna kill us and you need to come and save us. And I was like, but you can't get off the phone with me. And this is before she had a cell phone, or most people had cell phones. She's like, well, I have to hang up at some point to come over and check on you. How else will I know? So she's like, okay, I'm a count three. We're gonna hang up. You wait two minutes, you open the door. I will be there and I'll come and check. Sure enough, we hung up the phone, waited the two minutes. I opened the door, she was there, came in and dad was just snoring in his bedroom and I made the whole thing up like a little six-year-old does with their imagination. But she still came running anyways, as if there was a real emergency. That's the type of grandmother she was, always there at any time for anything, um, whether to laugh or to cry. And I think the one thing that was really special to me about my grandmother is that she was always able to make me laugh when I was crying, but also I was always able to make her laugh when she was crying. And I was always able to talk to her and have a relationship with her that no one else did. Um, and I'm just very grateful to have known her and been with her, and I'm glad that she's no longer in any pain, so. 
Yeah. Thank you, Nicole. So we men folk are wonderful and we have our moments, but uh, as somebody who has a number of daughters, I can tell you that mothers and daughters have a very special bond that can't be duplicated in any way. Again, there's a saying that goes, whether it's true or not, it's a cute saying that uh, a son is a son until he gets a wife and a daughter is a daughter for life. And it's not always true, but I think there's some truth into it. And over the years that I've known Barbara and as she was living with us at Park Plaza, Renee was always at her beck and call and always constantly there to support mom. It was not always easy. And I'm, I just know a tip of the iceberg in the last few years, but there was a very unique and special bond between Barbara and Renee, and a special sense of love and responsibility as I know Jay had as well, but I got to see it very much firsthand with that special connection between Barbara and Renee. And I'd like to have Renee just come say a few words about her dear mother. Barbara Faye Salkin Barish, as you all know her. Mom, Aunt Barb, Grammy B, friend, sweet, kind woman. I have 55 years of memories of my mom. And as I was preparing to share some of them with you, they're all a mist in my head. But what I'd like to say about my mom, things that are very true about her, she was kind, she was generous to a fault, giving of her whole heart selflessly. I remember as a young girl, she took care of my brother and I wonderfully. She made sure we had good food and clean clothes and good education and nice things and as peaceful as a life as she could possibly try to give us. Many of you know she had a, um, a rough start in life and with unfortunately having some mental illness, it made life very difficult for her. In turn made it a little bit difficult for my brother and I. But out of her turmoil and her suffering, came great strength that Jay and I learned to cultivate as adults. My mom did the best she could, and she was a wonderful lady. I'm recalling that she couldn't swim. She learned how to swim later in life. I took her for swimming lessons, and I remember being in the pool with her, and she would swim, fat, try to go fast, and her body wasn't moving. And it was just a funny thing. She was just trying to swim, and she wasn't going anywhere. But when we were young, uh, she would take my brother and I into the ocean in Hawaii when we would travel there for vacation. And she couldn't swim, but she would hold us. And she would play with us. And she had no fear. And she never let us see her fear. And that's a good mother. That's a good mom right there. She, she gave. She did the best she could. She loved us very much. She loved her family. She loved my dad. And she had more shoes than Imelda Marcos. <laughs> I still have some in my trunk if anybody wants them. <laughs> and she was a fighter. She was a fighter till the end with the emotional pain and the physical pain that she endured. She pushed through to stay around as long as she could for Nicole, for Jay, for myself. And she did pretty good. And she's finally, finally resting peacefully now. And I couldn't be happier that she is at peace with God, with my dad, with Aunt Florence and Uncle Jack and Aunt Dinny and the dogs and everybody who's already there. But I love you, Mom, and I love all of you. 
And I'm glad that she is at peace. Thank you so much, Renee, for those beautiful words. And again, over the last several days, as we were coming to grips with the loss of Barbara, there's no such thing as an expected passing, and it always feels like it's too soon. And right away, as we began very shortly after talking to Jay, the sense of love and the sense of honor and respect and the sense of commitment to, to see mom brought to rest in a dignified, honorable way to help bring the family together and to be there and to do his duty and to show acts of love with mom over the last several days and in general have been very strong. And so it's been a pleasure to get to know Jay just briefly over the last week and as well to know how special Barbara has been. So I'd like to call Jay to say a few words about his mother. Good morning. Um, those of you that know me know I'm not a person of many words, but I'm gonna try to get in as many as I can now so that I don't forget. I've been kind of all over the place here. Um, so I think I'm gonna start it up by, first of all, uh, for uh, thanking Hashem, thanking God for uh, watching over mom as long as he did. Um, I wanna thank um, her family, which was really all she had, she wasn't a working woman uh, in the sense uh, that we know it today. Um, she couldn't have been any closer to her brother and her sister, my Uncle Jack, um, my Aunt Denny, my Uncle Juki, uh, my Aunt Florence, their children, Leslie, Julie, uh, David, Lynn, I'm gonna do my best here now, um, Roberta, Harland, Joey, Judy, um, their children, uh, Brian, uh, Ashley, Julia, Michael, and Danny. Still have a few brain cells going there, so that's good news. Brene touched on one thing. Um, I don't know anyone more generous than my mom, and it goes back many, many years. Um, I remember having a good portion of our holiday parties, whether it was Thanksgiving or Passover or Rosh Hashanah or breaking the fast at our house. And, um, you know, to me, I'm old school. Um, those days with my uh, cousins, my aunts, my uncles, even going back to the South Side when I was a young boy, uh, 92nd and Jeffrey, I'm sorry, I don't know the address of where Uncle Jack lived, um, those days just will never be here again. Um, and I'm happy we had them. Uh, she had two very dear friends, um, Edie Newman, they go back, pretty sure it's 75 or 76 years. Um, Connie Finder, Cookie, um, minimum of five or six decades. Don't think to, to the tune of that. I'll apologize for if I forget anybody at this point. Um, the folks at Park Plaza um, were wonderful to her. Um, Mom had difficulties, as, as we all know. Um, she was an outstanding mother, did the best she could with what she had to work with. She had a marriage to my father which those of you know her, him, um, well, they did love one another, but it was difficult. They both battled uh, mental illness and it was a very, very, very tough time for both of them. But when one was down, the other was up and vice versa. Uh, before my dad passed away, he said something to me, not knowing that he was gonna pass, you know, and, I'm, and I know it, that he, that my mom was the only woman that he ever loved, um, even though he remarried. And, that's all secondary and stuff. And mom, she's old school. She was a uh, very beautiful young woman, could have uh, met someone else, but there was no one else other than my father. 
They uh, were high school sweethearts. My dad went away to college. She went with him. Um, she was prompt. She was um, always dressed to the hilt. And um, you know, just uh, all in all, a good person. Um, at which point there, uh, God knows, I'm pretty sure everyone in this room tried in some way, shape, or form. But, you know, she used to say, um, you can see a broken arm, you can see a broken leg, but you can't see a broken mind. Um, as we got older, um, things had changed. It's very difficult for someone to change how they've lived their whole life. Um, doing for themselves, and then one day not being able to drive, and then not being able to get out and see their children and nieces and nephews and cousins and go places and do things. Um, and I, I can't imagine someday not being able to stand here, talk, remember, and do all those things that she did through the course of time. Um, uh, my sister married, she has some children through marriage. Um, I remarried, I have three beautiful daughters through marriage as well. Um, and she was close with them and did good to them. Couldn't remember my daughter's names for about six months, but she did get it together eventually. She was an outstanding cook, even though I couldn't convince her to cook for the last 25 years. Um, and just downright, you know, good person. She had her moments. Um, I do want to say a, a kind of a special note to uh, my uh, Aunt Florence, may she rest in peace, um, and Dr. Samuel Henry Cranus, um, her therapist for many years. Um, two people, besides all of you, that um, kept her here about as long as all the Salkins stayed here, if my math is right, uh, my Aunt Denny and my Uncle Jack, I think they were somewhere in their early 80s, if I remember. Um, and they were all very close. Um, her last wish, uh, she's been wishing for it for a while, but you know, she just wanted to be with um, her brother uh, and uh, uh, my dad. And uh, hopefully, uh, God willing, she is. Uh, if I've missed anyone or forgot anything, please accept my sincere apologies. Um, I, you can never imagine the emotions that you'll have, whether you have a good, bad relationship, none. Probably the toughest thing for me uh, with this pandemic, which I do believe had something to do, mm -hmm. I've had COVID twice, um, I have not had a chance to see her in the last 13 or 14 months till today. Um, she had not been well the last handful of months in and out of um, hospitals, thank heavens in hospital, uh, Highland Park Hospital, Lake, Floor, Lake Forest, Swedish Covenant, um, and uh, just things that you can never understand, you hope and wish were differently. So um, for that, she taught me, as my dad did, an awful lot. Uh, as you are ch some of you are children, parents make mistakes. So change the mistakes that they made and move forward and the things that they taught you um, dwell upon them and um, live life. Uh, life is very short, okay? Uh, those of you that knew my dad, know me, um, every day is a gift. I've been saying it for a long time. You gotta enjoy yourself when you're here because you don't get a second chance. I'm not the most religious person, but, you know, at this time, no one has ever come back to tell me when they've left this earth how wonderful it is somewhere else. I just mentioned it to mom about a week ago that if there's some way she can let me know what's going on out there and something better, please send me some type of sign. Um, she loved every one of the people in this room more than you can possibly imagine. It's really all she had in this world. And um, I love you all as well, and I just want to say thank you.
So once again, thank you to Nicole, to Renee, to Jay for all those moving, moving and beautiful words. And so much to say about our dear Barbara. Barbara Faye Barish was born on March 3rd, 1940, just as the world was going topsy-turvy in World War II. It was the end of the Hebrew month of Adar, going into the Passover time, which I know was a special time for Barbara. She left us just this past Monday night, died peacefully in her sleep, the 29th day of ER, as we are also just again a number of weeks, five or six weeks from Passover. So she's a spring child, a child of the spring. And as we know, hope springs eternal and there is a renewal in life. And even when we think that things are barren and have withered and they aren't gonna grow again, somehow by the miracle of this world, God allows them to spring forth and even those desolate and barren places spring up again with new life. As are so many of the people in this room that are testaments to her life and those she touched and loved. She was the daughter of Albert and Harriet Salkin, Hattie Salkin, as we mentioned, brother to Jack and Eleanor to Dinny, Julie and Leslie, her nieces and nephews. She was basically a Chicago girl through and through, grew up on North Chicago, lived her whole life somewhere in that area of the world. Many achievements, although she didn't go to a formal college, Anyone who knew her knew that she was sharp, she was bright, she was articulate, she was well-dressed, well-spoken, and a thoughtful person. She was not a person who left without an impression. If you knew Barbara, you remembered her, and you were moved by her, and she touched you. I, when I first came to Chicago, I was living in the same complex in Park Plaza as everyone until I uh, was joined by the rest of my family and I would frequently see her in the hallways and we would talk and we would connect, we would touch. And she was so gracious and so kind and so warm. And I often wished that that same kindness and that same warmth, that same grace she would show to herself. Because if anyone who knew her knew that she was twice or three times as hard on herself as she was on everybody else, she would give her right arm for anybody else, lay down in the street and do anything she could to be kind, gracious, and loving to you, a woman of real charity. And sometimes we, I think we will all probably wish at times that she gave herself that same love that she deserved as well. She was a clean person, a neat person, a meticulous, a good dresser, loving and passionate. She didn't love all animals, but she did have a love for dogs. She had a couple dogs. She loved horses. She had a connection with the riding with some of the kids. She also, although she was a Chicago girl. She loved to travel. She and Alvin traveled. She went out to different places around the world on cruises, on different trips. She enjoyed seeing the world. She had a special place in her heart for Hawaii, and who doesn't? She loved music. She was a Johnny Mathis fan. And she loved life in general. When she was able to connect with her better angels, she really loved life and she loved the beauty of this world. And it was a blessing when she could fully appreciate that herself. As was mentioned, she and dad were high school sweethearts. And although they, he ended up with somebody else at one point, he said there was really no one else, as Jay said. It was always Barbara. And it was always the two of them. And how people are lucky. I think you said that she didn't date anybody else. Once she met dad, that was it. And they were hooked. And of course, as we mentioned, Nicole, you were so much the love and the light of her life, the sunshine in her every day. There was no one else when you were around. And Renee and Jay, you were her whole world. You were certainly her greatest achievements and that she cherished so mostly. You know, 
the world can be a mixed up place and we don't always appreciate the depth of the work and the depth of the intensity of what it is to be a good mother and a good homemaker and how amazing that is and how you create worlds and generations. And she did that by raising the two of you clean, beautiful life with always good education, good food, a happy home as much as she could provide it, as much as she could make it a good and safe place. And I think that beautiful story you told Nicole about how she was there for you and the false alarm, uh, you know, boogeyman murderer that was there. She was there for people. Her friends Connie and Eddie, who I know she had for many decades. You know, sometimes we rabbis think of unusual things. One of the things when I was reflecting on Barbara was I was thinking about a book that we read around the Yom Kippur time. We read the famous story of Jonah and the whale. Jonah is this prophet, this wonderful man of God who has all these talent and potential, and he thinks to himself that he's not good enough. He's not worthy. He's not right. He's going to run away from his duties in life. He's going to see if he can hide. And he hides in a boat. And he hides in the ship, and we know the ship is about to break apart by the storm. And Jonah gets thrown overboard, and he's swallowed by a whale. And he realizes that maybe, maybe God knows more than he does. And eventually, he gets washed ashore, and he does do what he's supposed to do. But there's always this inner torment that he's not good enough. And for people that struggle with illness, people that struggle with going through life, they don't see the beauty that we see in them. They don't see the goodness and the wonderful character that we see in them. And I feel like sometimes there was a little bit of Jonah in Barbara where she didn't see how great she was. She didn't see all the goodness she had. She didn't see that it was good enough. And she would say, well, I want you to be okay, and I want your family to be well, and I want you to be good. And we'd say, we'd want the same for you, Barbara. And she would say, no, I don't know. She didn't feel her own deservedness, and she certainly did. And ultimately, like Jonah, she was worthwhile, and God knew better, and she was so worthwhile, and she is going to be sorely missed. A life of 81 years is hard to capture, but you look around her friends and family today, you look around the people that she touched and she loved, she left her mark on this world, she left goodness and charity and good deeds, she would want us all to be good to those around us, to hold our loved ones close, to make them feel better than they deserve, and to love them more than we think we can, and to appreciate all the beauty and the grace there is in this world. And as Jay said so movingly, every day is precious, every day is a gift. Embrace it while you have it. Live life to the fullest and love deeply. Barbara will be sorely missed. May her memory be a blessing for us all. Continue with the psalm before the memorial prayer. David says in Psalm 16, Michtam le David, Shamreni el ki chasisi vach, Amarti la denoya denoya ta, Tovasi bala lecha le kdoshim a shabara tema, Vadire kol chefse vam, Yerbu at vosam acher meharu, Bala sikh nisi chechem idam, Val esa es shmosam al svasai. Adonai minas chelki vekosi atatomech gorali. Chavolim nafloli ben imim af nachala shafra alai. Avarechis adonai asher yatsani. Af lelos yisiruni kliosai. Shvisi adonai le negdi samid kimimini balamot. Lachain samachli bi yagel kvodi af bisari yishkon levetach. Kilosa zov nafshi lisho loti ten chastacha le rosh shachas. Todieni ora chayim sovas machas es panecha, nimos bi mincha netzach. In the scent of David, guard me, God, for you are and I have taken refuge. You have said to the Lord, You are my Lord, I have no refuge beyond you. As for the holy ones who are in the earth, and the mighty in whom is all my desire, their sorrows will multiply, and those that are run to the other gods, their blood libations will I not pour out, nor take their name upon my lips. The Lord is my allotted portion and my share. You sustain my fate. Portions have fallen to me in pleasant places. Lovely indeed is my estate. I will bless the Lord for who has given me counsel. My conscience admonishes me by night. I have set the Lord before me always because God is at my right hand. I shall not falter. Therefore my heart rejoices and my entire being exalts. Also my body will rest secure for you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let my devout ones see destruction. 
You will make known to me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. There is delight at your right hand for eternity. Please rise for the memorial prayer. El Malay Rakamim Shochen Bamiramim Amtse Minucha Nechona Al Kanfe Ashkina Be Mahalas Kedoshim Torim Kazor Harakina Mazirim Esh Nishmas Bela Fega Bas Albert Shalalama Bavo Shanak the Mispalim Baras Karas Nishmasa Began Eden Taminu Hosa Lachen Balarachamim Yasti Rabbi says Yaknaf of the Olamim Bits Robert Surahayim is Nishmasa Adonai Nakalasa Besanuach b'shalom ha'mishkava V'nomar amen God full of compassion who dwells on high grant proper repose on the sheltering wings of your presence in the lofty levels of the holy and pure who shine as the brightness of the firmament onto the soul of Barbara Fay, daughter of Albert and Hattie who has gone to her world and for whose memory we pray May her repose be in paradise. May the master of compassion bring her under the cover of God's wings and bind her soul in the bond of life. May the Lord be your heritage and may she repose on her resting place in peace. And let us respond. Amen. On the back of your pamphlet, you'll find the Kaddish. We will recite from Renee and Jay the Kaddish. And then we'll conclude the service here. Yiskadal, Yiskadash, Me Rabba, the Amadi Rach, your Savi, Amli Machusei, the Chaychon, Yemichon, the Chaye de Hobes Israel, Bagala, Ubisman, Karib, Imru, Amen. Yehesh, Me Rabba, Mavarach, the Lamu Mayo Mayo, Isparach, Vistabach, Vispar, Vistraman, Vis Nasei. Visadar, Visalev, Visalal, Shemit, Kutcha, Brihu, Elam in Kabra Hasav, Shirasa, Tushbe Hasav, and Echemasta, Damiram Biama, Vim Ruam, Yehe, Shlamber Abim in Shemaya, Vahai, what about Kal Yisra, Vim Ruam, O Seshalam, Ramav, Huya Seshalam, Aleinu, Via Kal Yisra, Vim Ruam, as we just recited. May he who makes peace in the heavens, may he make peace upon us and all of Israel. And may we say amen. You may be seated for one more moment. Ladies and gentlemen, the interment service will continue at West Lawn Cemetery, located at 7801 West Montrose in Norridge. For those of you who will be driving in the funeral procession, the procession will be forming in our parking lot Please obtain an orange safety funeral sticker to place on the right-hand side of your windshield. Have your bright lights and hazard lights on at all times. For additional measures of safety, we will be providing a car in the back of the procession to hopefully keep other cars from entering the procession. And for your own personal safety, I strongly recommend using your horn liberally as you're going through the intersections. Please do not speak or text on your cellular phone while driving to a cemetery. Memorial contributions in her memory may be made to any charity that relates to emotional and nervous disorders or suicide awareness. And also the shiva will continue here at the chapel from one to five. So after the interment, everyone's invited uh, here at the funeral home from one to five. For those of you who are joining us online, the family appreciates you taking your time to be part. At this time, I invite everyone to rise and stand in place as we escort the casket of Barbara Faye Barish from the chapel, then you may return to your cars.
gentlemen, will you turn to the front?